because basically like you telling me that it's illegal for me to be an artist. That's our time to feel free. You know, with all the hate that we have to deal with and go through, we are the hated. The bill in Tennessee goes into effect April 1st. There are many reasons people need to find a new path in life. I was a military spouse, which means I moved around and my job was supporting him. So if you look at my resume, it says she has not worked in 15 years. How a virtual reality training program helped her find a career she initially never pictured herself in. New numbers out today show the job market remains strong despite aggressive interest rate hikes. The U.S. added 311,000 jobs in February. It's a drop from January's gain of 504,000 positions, but still higher than economists predicted. Leisure and hospitality added the most jobs, followed by retail and government. Amidst the country's ongoing labor shortage, few sectors have been more impacted than the auto industry. But the problem is also giving way to unique solutions involving cutting edge technology. Scripps News photojournalist Ben Worsley shows us how. Most people that are here want to be here. So they come in and they want to work, they want to learn. They want a battery already. I call it the, the field of dreams model, right? If you build it, they will come. You're real dirty, see? Who doesn't want to be a badass female that can work on cars? <laughs> Vehicles for Change is, is really a unique, innovative nonprofit. So we take donated cars and then we actually repair the car. We train individuals, most of whom are coming directly out of incarceration to be auto mechanics. Change them out. So now they work on the cars and then those cars are awarded to families. Made some bad decisions and choices, uh, wound up incarcerated. Uh, it was a uh, burglary. Decided I needed to do something to better myself so when I come home I can support myself and my family and got into this program and I never turned back. I recently got divorced and I'm a newly single mom. I have never been incarcerated. I think I may be an anomaly around here, I don't know. But life still hit me in a way that required me to find another door. I was a military spouse, which means I moved around and my job was supporting him. So if you look at my resume, it says she has not worked in 15 years. Across the country, there's more than 70,000 vacant jobs that they don't have anybody training for or are gonna go into those fields. And they say that in the next five years, that number is going to start to reach two, three, four hundred thousand. As a female, it's giving me the confidence to walk into a shop. And when they say, you need to get your sway bar link fixed, I can be like, oh, you mean this part right here? Because it's giving a little some play, right? Okay, got it. When they leave here, they're usually starting anywhere from 18 to $25 an hour. They're making $50,000 a year. So we developed virtual reality so we could really kind of increase the numbers exponentially across the country. As far as we know, there's nobody else doing this. So this is really cutting edge stuff. Typically, you're looking at an environment where you're about six hours of training. We have three different lessons, one for oil change, one for balancing and rotating tires, and one for replacing brakes. This is exactly what a standard garage would look like. And then the tools that we have in the middle next to the car are going to be the things that we need for the, whatever the lesson is. Ah, there we go. That makes them basically virtual reality certified, but they have to go out into the real garage and actually do it um, because you don't change oil virtually as much as I try to brag to my wife that I can. It's a good connection between book learning and full classroom training. Oil field cap removed. You're looking at $450,000 to launch an automotive training program that might train 50 or 60 people a year. And for $50,000, using virtual reality, you can train 60 people a year. We'll be able to train people across the country. You know, we'll be able to impact the void that the employers have in the technician field. I, I know I look funny. <laughs> Eventually, I think I may want to be a state inspector. Maybe one day I'll have my own shop. That seems like it could be a really um, cool field to go into. Sit in the office, do the paperwork. But until then, I'll be helping other people. You know, just looking over big. I had never worked with people coming out of incarceration before. And probably like a lot of folks from America and looking at, at a recidivism rate, 70% going, oh, they're just bad people. Well, guess what? They're not bad people. They are really living up to their model of providing an experience that gives you a second chance. But if you give individuals an opportunity and an opportunity that's going to be life changing, boy, I'll tell you, our, our folks just, it's amazing to watch them. Vehicles for Change plans to expand to 20 locations nationwide in the next five years.
Hey there, good afternoon to you. It is Friday. We're looking forward to the weekend and spring break coming up, of course. So I know a lot of folks have that forecast top of mind. We'll get to that in a moment, but right now taking you through the rest of your Friday leading on into the weekend. Here's how conditions are going to pan out hour by hour. So we'll get back into the 70s here uh, before long. That wind, remember, more from the east today, so that's why it's been feeling extra humid and hazy out there. Uh, those winds coming back down as we go through the evening and more of a southeasterly influence as we head on into tonight. So starting out on Saturday morning, you're making those plans. We will be dipping back down into the 60s before long and winds will be pretty light. So again, I wouldn't be surprised if we're met with some fog starting out tomorrow morning. Just keep that in mind. But what we really need more than anything is some rain here in the forecast. So I've been doing this comparison between last week's drought monitor index and what we learned from yesterday's update. So last week we had drought throughout the coastal bend with uh, the extreme northern portions leading to Victoria Crossroads just dealing with abnormally dry conditions noted here in yellow. Yesterday, Thursday's drought monitor index showed we have worsening areas of drought. So we have that moderate drought extending all the way through uh, Goli most of Goliad County and into Refugio County. But in our southern zones, Falfurias, Hebronville, you are two communities that are already in an extreme drought here in the coastal bend. So we desperately need some rainfall uh, of some kind to come. So it's nice that we have a cold front on the way. This looks to arrive by Sunday night late Sunday night, so the timing for the rainfall with it will be on Monday. Now this uh, looks to trigger rainfall throughout the day on Monday, some of which could linger into Tuesday. It'll be intermittent, not all at once, but it looks like we could pick up some good rainfall from this on the order of maybe uh, a quarter of an inch to possibly upwards of a half inch of rain, depending on the timing of this uh, front and where you are in the coastal bend. So we're going to keep an eye on that. But over the next five days, the weekend is looking dry. Make plans outside should be good, but make sure you're drinking plenty of water because it's still going to feel very hot. But uh, Monday we start to see some of that rain coming in, especially in our southern zones where we need it toward the valley. Tuesday we'll get some more of that rain more widespread, but we have two cold fronts that will be on the way, and so that will cause our temperatures to cool not only back to normal, but dipping below normal at times. And it looks like the uh, extended term as we go through next weekend, we'll have some of those cooler temperatures lingering around as well. But this weekend, daylight saving time begins. So that means we spring forward. We roll those clocks ahead one hour. This is also a really good time to check the batteries in your smoke alarms. Make sure those are good to go. Safety first, right? And this is the one time to remember to check them. So make sure you're doing that. But all in all, we lose an hour of sleep might be worth it because our sunsets will be significantly later. 736 PM will be that new sunset time but we'll wake up to darker mornings with us pushing ahead an hour as well. If you're looking ahead to that spring break outlook, here's a couple things to know. Breezy conditions, but we're watching the direction of that wind throughout the week. We have those scattered showers on Monday and lingering into Tuesday, watching rain chances for the rest of the week. Beach safety, mind that flag system. It's there for your safety. You're gonna wanna wear SPF 30 or higher, and our temperatures throughout the afternoon will range between 70 and 85 degrees, so not too bad overall. Here's a look at the next seven days. Sunday we could be breaking the high temperature record, so make sure you're uh, taking those breaks inside. More than five years after Hurricane Harvey, the city of Aransas Pass is celebrating the end of their recovery efforts. Today, the Memorial Tower across at Con Brown Harbor was officially replaced. The original cross was built in 1970, but it was destroyed in the 2017 hurricane. DMR Services of Ingleside rebuilt this cross thanks to funding from the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Texas Division of Emergency Management. The day of the hurricane, August 25th, 2017, uh, the cross came down and it's taken all this time, all this period of time to replace it. It's a brand new cross uh, and uh, it, uh, it uh, serves the purpose of uh, ha being an important part of the community actually. The new cross is wind resistant and located at the top of the tower.